Welcome to Critter Crusades, the show about ordinary people on extraordinary missions to help animals. I'm here today with a wonderful person, Maria Take of the Forte Animal Rescue. Welcome. Thank you. So glad you came today. We also want to mention that you're also very involved with the LA Animal Services as a commissioner. So you do a variety of things. You've taken your love of animals into a lot of different directions. Tell me about Forte Animal Rescue. What is that? Well, um, we originally wanted to be more like a virtual type of organization and be focused on education, mm -hmm. but we do a lot of hands-on. We save animals from the street, from the shelters, before they get put down to sleep, mm -hmm. and we find homes for them, and we place about, about 100, 150 dogs a year. Wow. Now, is it based only with dogs, or do you handle any other animals? Well, originally, um, I love all kinds of um, animals, dolphins and whales and turtles, of course. I scuba dive, so I love them all. So They're hard to house, though. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's why it's not called Forte Dog Rescue. Forte, mm -hmm. It's a Forte Animal Rescue, and we do once in a while some cats and everything, but mm -hmm. actually dogs became our Forte. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. We are, I would say, 99% dogs right now, but who knows what is going to happen in the future. Where did your love of animals begin? Since I was little. I did you have a lot of animals when you were younger? No, but uh, I think it's the influence from the parents, mm -hmm. and then that applies to everybody. For example, if you're walking on the street with your dogs, sometimes you notice mother and children come up to you. Some of them say, oh, cute. Mm -hmm. Some of them are totally afraid. Mm -hmm. Children are always reflecting what the mother is feeling. So I think my mother had a lot of um, role in this situation because she loves animals. And when I was little, when I was only two or something, there comes some big dog and she would say, cute. So I remember the dog's face was up here and I was like, oh, cute. <laughs> Wonderful. So is she involved with your rescue? Not really, but uh, supportive. She's supportive. So where did the name come from? Well, that was my last uh, late dog. And actually, I used to volunteer for all sorts of different groups. Mm -hmm. And those are my, I call it volunteer heyday. Mm -hmm. And I enjoy that. And then I knew how hard it is to run a group. So I never, ever, ever wanted to run a group. <laughs> but um, one group that we, like a group of us were involved, um, the head of the group wanted to shut down, and we were like, what do we do? And then some of them wanted to start a group. And then I said, okay, if you're going to start a group, I will help you. Mm -hmm. And then they said, uh, forte is a good word. So I felt like, oh, I'm honored, you know? So that's how it kind of started. But then um, the person who originally wanted to start the organization got ill, and everything, everything fell on my back. So I felt like at the time that um, uh, just, you know, we just had like kind of like a handful of dogs that we had trying to place. So I felt like, okay, after these are gone, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm just going to go back to volunteering. That never happens once it you never start. Happens. Right. Endless <laughs> number of dogs come. Mm -hmm. But the way those dogs came was, like I said, originally I wanted to have more like a virtual educational and to be the bridge between the de different rescue groups and the community. But um, you asked me about the childhood. Mm -hmm. When my grandfather was in a hospital, my mom had to drive me, you know, we drove to the grandfather and we had to drive through this canyon, kind of like a Topanga Canyon here. Mm -hmm. And then there was this old lady living there. And we used to call her, um, well, this was in Japan, mm -hmm. um, Doggy Granny. Mm -hmm. And she had like 30, 35 dogs that oh. she rescued. And it was like a, you know, mommy and ducklings. It was interesting. I was four years old or something. So that was past. That was that. And many years passed. When I was in high school or college, there was this little newspaper um, column an article about the lady. It said the lady died. All of her dogs were taken to the pound and got killed. Mm. That really quietly shocked me and stayed in me for a long time. But I was still, I can't remember either high school or college, but then the time passes and then you move on and everything. So I was volunteering for these groups and then one time 
um, trying to make it short, but uh, I um, met this old lady. She's now like 79 years old. Mm -hmm. And um, she needed an umbrella of a 501c3 nonprofit organization, which I already had because I was kind of framed to run this organization. Right. And, um, but she had just a you know, few crates and then here's this a table and then on that, how to start an animal, uh, how to start a 501c3 organization. I mean, she's like a back then 75, doesn't have a computer. I looked at her and said, you know, I mean, you can't do that. You mm -hmm. need insurance and everything. So I said, why don't you do this under an umbrella? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, she was very grateful and everything, but all I committed to at the moment was to give her the umbrella and to help her get the uh, insurance and that was it. But then how could you let this lady in her 70s slap around the crate and dog mm -hmm. and stuff? So I started gathering volunteers and then we got really involved. We started having this every Saturday. Mm -hmm. Originally I didn't want to have the venue. I wanted to do more like on just a website. but. Right. Here she is, and then she's been doing this for decades. So sometimes people just dump animals on her, and mm -hmm. then so we thought we place these, and then more animals come in, and so we have this Saturday adaptions every single Saturday. And this woman was sort of a catalyst then, as you say, to really make you do that thing you didn't want to do that you said you weren't <laughs> going to do. It seems like that's sort of a theme with a lot of rescuers. They go, I have this passion mm -hmm. for it but I don't want that commitment. I don't want to have to right. go through that because the disappointments that happen when you don't see the animals being adopted, that commitment every week, I've got to find mm -hmm. somebody to house this dog one more day, one more week, the money to deal with it, mm -hmm. issues that happen with care and everything. So what, what is one of the greatest things you've learned from doing this as far as um, keeping people motivated that do rescue mm -hmm on their own or through a 501c3 or, or occasionally helping out, what do you think is a good thing to do or to say to them to keep them motivated? Well, one thing I've really learned is because often when you rescue animals, you're angry with people who are irresponsible because all of the animal sufferings are the product of human beings, wrongdoing, irresponsibility, selfishness. Mm -hmm. So people get very angry. But what I really believe in is when you rescue animals, you have to have the strengths derived from the compassion, not anger. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest lesson I've learned. So com compassion has driven you uh, and has become a passion as mm -hmm. well to do this. Now, how did you get that first start, though, to do the volunteer work? How did you even find out about that? A lot of people don't <laughs> even know it's interesting. that may watch the show or hear it about rescue groups. They don't even know where do they exist, how do they come Well, about? I didn't know either, actually. Oh, originally, when I, when I rescued Forte, there were no website, nothing. So I tried to place him, and I couldn't. And how did, so, how did you rescue him? Oh, actually, I was at a friend's house, and then I was looking outside a kitchen nook, and then I saw this animal control truck loading him. So I went outside, and I said, what are you doing? And then here's this uh, lady. Uh, next door or something, something that she said, well, you know, this dog has been astray and eating my cat food and then it's, he's been here for a week. So I thought I would call the animal control so they can find a home for him. I said, find a home? He's going to be put down in a week. Mm -hmm. And um, I asked the uh, animal control officer if I could take the dog. And then because he's already registered in the system to be picked up and everything, so he said, no, we can't. You have to adapt him out because mm -hmm. we have to, you know, Mm -hmm. I mean, he was taken as a stray. So mm -hmm. I, of course, was checking in and see how it was going. And um, he was not adapted out, so I went and picked him up. And um, I tried to find a home for him, but uh, I found a couple of homes, but he didn't bond with anybody. And um, he kept coming back. He kept to coming you. back <laughs> to me. The last home, he ate the entire living room. I mean, <gasps> The adapter's wife had a fit. Oh no! So, but then an I interesting thing was he never touched anything in my house. Oh. So I felt like, a, oh, you did it on purpose so that you would be kicked out, didn't you? So he was the instigator of the name. He was already named Forte. Mm -hmm. I named him. You named him Forte, mm -hmm. but then the organization became named Forte right, after that. Right, because those uh, friends that I was volunteering with, right. who wanted to start a group, um, right. 
you know, thought that they was a good word. They thought that was a good name. And he has passed. Yes. And so he is he is uh, an honorary uh, member and, and yeah. the one Founder. that keep, yeah, and keeps everybody motivated to remember what he was about. Mm -hmm. So how many people do you have working with you? We have, I think, like 50 people on the wow. uh, volunteer list. However, I think I would say maybe a dozen of us really mm -hmm. work. Maybe mm -hmm. five of us really work every day. So you're established. People know and expect to see you where you go on mm -hmm. Saturdays. They're ready to see you. And right. what sort of application process do you have for people that are wanting to adopt? Adopt? Well, you know, um, we encourage them to come to the adoption first so they can meet the dogs. And then they have to fill out the adoption questionnaire, which, um, oh, anyways, and then we have to do the home safety check. We mm -hmm. go out and then if there is something wrong, we tell them what to fix. And then when they fix, they contact us and then we go back and if everything is fixed and then they get to adopt the animal. And one time, uh, this woman who adopted a child in the past, and she said, oh my God, you have more strict. <laughs> right, I know some people have said, oh, it's so hard to, to you know, go to these rescue groups. They won't let us do things because they're, they're too stringent. But I know that oftentimes, they jump the four-foot fence, they end up in mm -hmm, the pound. Exactly. They escape, they have, they have been frightened by the, you know, very wild three-year-old child mm -hmm. that, hates dogs or whatever, and they didn't know about all those situations right. that then end up, the animal comes back to you. You might as well be prepared, say, look, this is what's going to happen. If it happens, you're going to be contacting us back mm -hmm. again. Do you have a return policy so that people take, you know, they have to bring the animal back they to you? They have to bring them back to us, yes. And do you do post checks afterwards as far as looking into the oh, animal yes. six months mm -hmm. later or something to see how always, things are going? Always, always. What is your success rate, would you say? We have very little returns. I mean, right. the, the, there are situations happen, but I think we have very little returns because we take longer to mm -hmm. place each animal. Mm -hmm. And then that's the difference. I mean, we encourage people to go to the city shelters mm -hmm. because that's the true rescue. So mm -hmm. whenever we don't have the kind of dogs that people want, you we always ask them. them to go. But then another thing is we know our dogs. We know who's Party right. trained, who's right. not? Right. So sometimes we have this brand new dog that we just mm -hmm. took in, and we tell people that we know little about this. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to like family with children, we feel more comfortable to place the ones that we know mm -hmm. would and be good. How do you find fosters? Very difficult. How Very many difficult. fosters would you say you have? Ah, uh, at any given time, maybe ten. That's varied. And so how many animals do you usually have at an adoption? Um, well, we, have, we also help other rescuers, too. So we have oh, usually 70 dogs posted on, on the website, but we bring in about 25 dogs to the adoption. Wow. So how does this transition to you becoming a commissioner for the LA Animal Services? Very interesting. I had to choose what I wanted to do because um, when I was volunteering, I had the luxury of going to somebody's adoption and then do some like a letter writing, more for the lobbying. But then at some point you have to choose. So I happened to be hands-on. So mm -hmm. I was not really following that much about what was going on. I knew um, some past general managers had problems and stuff like that, but I was not that much involved. And then I kind of drew a line because I n couldn't do everything. Mm -hmm. But when the situation came up, I started thinking that rescuing animals are very important. Mm -hmm. And then even if it's like a one animal, that's one life. It's mm -hmm. very important. And then I treasure the experience. But I thought about the big picture, that when we are rescuing, say, you know, 100, 150 dogs per year, it's still like scooping water with a coffee cup out of the sinking ship. Mm -hmm. And then to be involved with the city, I thought I might be able to make difference for tens of thousands of animals. Because approximately, what, 100 to 150 animals come in a day? Yes. In the, in the city of Los Angeles? Yes, absolutely. People don't understand that. No, it's mind-boggling. Mm -hmm. So that's why I felt like, um, because 40 Animal Rescue is 100% volunteer, 5 3 so none of us makes even a penny. We, we are actually out of pocket. Mm -hmm. And then I have to make a living. And then how do I fit this in? Mm -hmm. But I thought about that, so I took some personal s suffering mm -hmm. 
Uh, definitely, I'm not making as much as I used to because I have to spend more time. And if I do something, I want to do it right. So, so it was a big decision. And actually, at the beginning, because I live in Marina del Rey, I said, "Oh, sure, I will," but. Uh, I'm thinking I will be disqualified, but uh, I happen to live in the section of Marina del Rey that belongs to the city. So. Oh, you were able to. <laughs> so I was but, qualified as right. a LA citizen. So. so what does that take to be a commissioner? How much time, what is the role of a commissioner? Well, and how many are there? Oh, we are supposed to be five, mm -hmm. but uh, one of our fellow commissioners became an um, assistant general manager, mm -hmm. so we lost her. And uh, another one, wants to move on because of his business situation, mm -hmm. but he's kind of hanging on until we find a replacement. So um, we definitely need two more. To but it's usually right a board now. of five? Five, yes. Okay, and what do they over, do they oversee the LA Animal yes. Services mm -hmm. and the managers and everything, or how does the hierarchy work? Well, we are under the mayor's office, mm -hmm. and we oversee the department. Okay. So the general manager reports to us. All right, and so how often do you meet? twice a month. And these are meetings that are just the commission or is it public as well? It is a public uh, meeting and uh, we welcome everybody to come and there is an uh, agenda item in, at which that people can talk about all animal related issues and we try to have evening meetings in the community. I propose to do it every four meetings so that it would be every other month and I think it, uh, in 2007, we will have uh, five or six mm -hmm. community meetings. So. At these meetings, you're able to address issues that the community has. Do you also, do you pass any sort of rules and regulations? What are some of the accomplishments or what are some things that fa face, have faced you and then what you've accomplished? Well, we have passed um, many good policies and uh, we try to reflect what the public needs. Mm -hmm. And also, the issue is after the policy is passed, how the department will enforce. So sometimes those issues will come back to the agenda. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Give me an example of something that, let's say, has been an issue and then finally a resolution came and you passed it and it has made a change in the system for the positive direction. Well, there are many, but f one recent um, matter is that uh, we passed this uh, policy that no rabbits will go out free mm -hmm. because there were some rabbits going out to be fed to some snakes and something really scary happening so we passed that but um, we still have to follow up on it. And then other things I heard before uh, 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 making the hours longer for yes. people so that, that they were able... that was before my time. Right, so that they're able to uh, have more time for adoption. Mm -hmm. As far as the expansion of the the animal services shelters that's mm -hmm. happened, I know I've seen videos yes. of those and seen the wonderful changes that have happened. Uh, were you overseeing that as well as far as the changes? The of commi commission was. Mm -hmm. I came in um, when they were still under the construction, but I could not um, bring any input to mm -hmm. what to do with the, say dog runs and stuff like that. So I tried to voice it, but I was told it would be far more expensive if they make changes mm -hmm. now. Right. As far as issues that come up often, mm -hmm. what are some of the more common issues that the public brings to you that you have to deal with? Is it is one of the major issues, I guess, what I'm trying to find out because it seems to me it would be is about spay and neuter Absolutely. being the you know issue that causes all the dilemma to mm -hmm. begin with but that people have a variety of ways of coming to a resolution about that. It's, what do you hear from the public? What is it that... A lot is no-kill. Of mm -hmm. course, it would be wonderful, and I, I would strive to make this city no-kill. Mm -hmm. But we also have to be realis realistic. We cannot just s stop the killing. Yes, we should stop the killing, but then what do we do? 150 dogs come in every day. What, what are we supposed to do? Pile them up in the run? Mm -hmm. We can't do that either. Mm -hmm. So. The department needs to come up with more strategies and actually act upon solid plans. Right. And in those plans, I know that there has been uh, instigated different things such as working with rescue organizations mm -hmm. to make it more available for them mm -hmm. to get animals out at, at less cost, mm -hmm. sometimes no cost. Mm -hmm. 
uh, working on having more adoption days, mm -hmm. utilizing the new services and the new shelters, motivating people in new ways, mm -hmm. getting more volunteers. I understand there's more groups or more companies that say, let's do this as a volunteer project. Mm -hmm. uh, publi publicity, media, anything to make awareness uh, the number one issue so people understand the plight of animals. Mm -hmm. Tell me about any issues that you've dealt with with pit bull fighting and the fighting that goes on uh, and cockfighting and all those different issues. That is one thing that we've been trying to put on the agenda and that we have not been able to address it. Mm -hmm. Uh, in detail yet, but I would like to resolve that those issues. Is that possible. under your jurisdiction, though? Yes. All right. So, how does that become a part of your jur jurisdiction in the sense that that's often criminal, mm -hmm. and you're dealing with issues that are animals that are coming in and department related? I mean, you do have a section, I believe, that oversees animals that are seized from, let's say, uh, evidence crack dogs. Exactly. Mm -hmm that kind of situation. Right. Well, um, animal cruelty is a separate issue. I mm -hmm. mean, to prosecute, there is a unit mm -hmm. that does that. But uh, animal, well, actually now that the Department uh, of um, Animal Services and the Animal Cruelty Prosecution Unit are working together. So when the um, Animal Services receives some calls about animal cruelty, then the LAPD would come with the department staff. So. That, I think, is a good step forward. Is there an expansion on the amount of animal regulation officers that could then look into this, or are they staying at sort of the same number right now? Is there any sort of expansion uh, plans? I don't have that particular number right I was now. just curious if there, because I know that's always been a difficulty right. in a huge city like this. Right. How do they look in, even if they do begin a new plan about, let's say, tethering laws, or they begin plans mm -hmm. about spaying and neutering, how do you enforce that? I that think is, that is a challenge. I wish we would have an um, actual animal unit mm -hmm. at the LAPD. And when you have a city like this, imagine the enormity of mm -hmm. that. There have been so many wonderful things on television and on radio that people talk about and in the news that mm -hmm. uh, gets the word out about the importance of these mm -hmm. issues. What are some of the goals for the commission now moving forward? What are some of the the major goals that they want to have happen? Well, uh, we are also trying to make the Spain neuter ordinance. Mm -hmm. That would, I, I hope, make a lot of difference because the problem is a reproduction. Mm -hmm. I mean, <laughs> if you would like to reduce the number of them, you have to reduce the number that will be reproduced. And uh, we definitely need more veterinarians. Mm -hmm. So the more veterinarians we have, the better care we can give, more spay and neuter. Mm -hmm. So those are the issues that I would like to resolve. That's great. As far as the, standard, uh, the general state of affairs of animals in Los Angeles, has it improved or what's happening with it? When you see it, when you hear the public coming in, what do you feel? You mean the public's m mindset? Mindset, but also what you're getting statistically about animals. Are there more spay and neuters occurring? Is there more awareness happening? What well, do you see generally at your meetings? Well, supposedly um, the number of the animals put to death has been decreased. Mm -hmm. But um, we are supposed to run some audit, which hasn't been done yet, and I'm really curious to see mm -hmm. what the result will be. Mm -hmm. And in that, that has been, though, Obviously, expansion of size of shelters, expansion yes. of the spay and neuter. Right. I know that the city also puts on different spay and neuter events mm -hmm. during the year, so that way people can get low cost right. help in that voucher systems and mm -hmm. things like that. In these last moments, what are some of your personal goals for animals and helping in animal welfare? Wow, that's interesting. You know, I think it comes back to my thought about compassion. I would like people to learn, learn compassion because people who studied the animal cruelty tend to go into the cruelty with human. Mm -hmm. And to, to have your strength derived from compassion is much stronger than to act upon anger. So through the animals, I would say let the animals teach us what the compassion is. and. Um, Personally, I just have to keep doing what I'm doing anyway. As long as there are animals out there that need help, I just can't quit. Well, you know, um, as a commissioner, 
I have my own uh, my, my term period, so once that's up, that's up. But with Fort Animal Rescue, I suppose until I die. Oh, that's a, that's a good goal. <laughs> <laughs> that's a long goal. Let's hope. Maybe differently. Maybe I may not be schlepping around when I'm 99. But <laughs> right, right. And I also believe one of the things I think that's so important is getting this message to students, to children. Absolutely, that's the most important. That, that what you're saying about teaching compassion, mm -hmm. teaching about the education of the process of animals in our in our world, how we can live jointly, we can live together peacefully, mm -hmm. and we can make a difference in their world. I think that's so important. The um, one thing I would like to see personally is that educational programs could be uh, involved with the LA Animal Services. Right, absolutely. So that way students could come to the shelters. Mm -hmm. I know one of the goals was to make a shelter seem less scary of a place. difficult <laughs> place to go. Right. And bring in an environment in that would absolutely look like maybe there is something here that we could enjoy. Right. As hard as it is to say that, but for children you can't frighten them, I think, into something at the same time I think it's important for them to know the truth. Mm-hmm because animals right. do get put down, right. therefore they have to become responsible and spay neuter. Right, and I think teaching their parents, especially with the yes. variety of ethnic groups we have in the city, it's mm -hmm. a very large area, there's different belief systems, there are different ways of handling. Abuse of animals is, like you say, abuse of humans as well. Right. People that do that to their animals may be doing that to their children. Mm -hmm. It also would be beneficial as an educational process for family members, they can also learn about compassion of their own families. Absolutely. Thank you so much for coming, well, and I wish you, you the for best inviting. with everything you've done and all the work that you do. I want to thank you very much for joining us here on Critter Crusades, the show about ordinary people on extraordinary missions to help animals. Make a difference. Spay and neuter your animals. Look into your animal shelters and different rescue groups. Find the love of your life. Animals are out there. They're there to help us all. Thank you. So.